In this lesson, we're just going to have a little bit of fun. This is quite a complex subject, so if you're not feeling that you are co confident enough to do this, don't worry, you can move on to the next lesson. If you want a bit of a challenge, this lesson's for you. It's called automation. Now in dance music, there's so much automation going on. Now automation is basically the idea of movement, where you can take a sound and you can move it in some way, whether that be moving it from the left speaker to the right speaker, moving it up or down in volume, or adjusting the frequency to make it sound like there's a whoosh or something. Dance music does this a lot. So let me show you what I mean. Automation, if you click on the A button on your keyboard, you'll see that all these lines come up. Now, by default, what you have is a volume automation. So here's the volume automation here. It says volume. This little button's on. If I press the A, all that disappears. Press A again, and it comes up. You'll notice that this little yellow button here corresponds with this one here. This is also the automation button. So you can get to it that way or by pressing the A. Now, Simple, simple terms, if you want to change the, the way the volume adjusts, what we do is put a click so that there is a little dot. And then, for instance, you put another click where you want it to kind of end. And then another one at the end. At the moment, we've done nothing but kind of create these dots. Now, if I grab this holder and drag it down, and I could have dragged I could have clicked on the dot itself, but by clicking on the line, it brought the two corresponding dots down together. So basically, if you look at my sound, if I bring my playhead to here, you'll see my volume is at zero. Now, as we move on, let me just get the playhead here. You still see it's still at zero. Now, watch it move up. Okay, and there we go, a nice simple fade in automation. And if you want to do a fade out as well, we can do the same here at the end. So now we've got a fade out. So that's fairly simple. What about if we wanted to create some kind of panning automation? Let's come to another sound. Let me just try and find one. Let's try... Let me duplicate something actually. Hold on, right, let's grab this one. Um, and we will press duplicate. And we'll drop this downwards. Alt, click, drag. Now we've got the same part again. We'll just solo this. Now this one, press A, so we've got the automation up. This one, we're going to change it from saying volume to pan. Okay, with pan, if we drag it all the way down, so let me just drag it all the way down, you can now see that that is coming out of the pan on the right speaker. Okay, if we drag it all the way up, you'll see that it's coming out of the left speaker. And then in the middle, if I can get it, there it is. That's coming dead center. So you imagine we create loads of little dots. And we can create a few more. And then we want it to bounce left and right. And we just move these dots around a little bit. And there we go. We've got a nice bit of automation. And we've pressed play now. We've got this soloed. So there you go, there's a nice bit of automation. Another bit of automation, and the last one I'm going to show you, is how to record in. Now, we have a frequency envelope right here. So if we select this channel, and we come over here and double click on this, it's currently turned off, so we need to turn it on. And this one here is the low pass filter, okay? So all we do is drag this one down, and we'll get this kind of envelope. Now if we drag it all this way, basically that's going to make very, very little sound. Let me just show you this. So here we go, let's put a loop around this so we can hear it happen. Okay, here we go. So it's very muffled, and we're gonna grab this hurt style. And we're just gonna drag it up. And as we drag it up to a suitable kind of level, let me just adjust this ever so slightly. Here we go, ready? When it comes back around. Let me get rid of this because that's causing havoc as well. So that should be a bit more obvious now. Okay, so we've got this dial. How do we get it to record this automation? Because if you look at this, it's very hard. We can get to the EQ from here, but it's very hard to find the, what, the dial that we want. So we're gonna record the automation in. So all we're gonna do is come down to here where it says read at the moment, and we're gonna turn it to write. Okay, with it turned to right, we're just going to press the record button. Okay, that's going to start playing, and then we're going to adjust that. Okay, 
and press stop. We don't need to record any more than that because we've got the dial up. Now we can do everything manually. So let me close this. We'll make this a bit bigger so we can see what we're actually doing. We'll delete some of these dots. Now if you want to delete them, you can just select them and press the delete button. Um, and all I'm going to do is drag that one up, drag that one down, do the same again. Now, let's go back to this one and hopefully we will see that in action. One thing I forgot to mention is we do need to turn this back to read mode, okay? If we leave it in touch or write or latch, it will keep changing other parameters as we adjust them. So make sure at the end of a real-time automation, just turn it back to read. So here we go again. Okay, so I think you can see how that works. Now, let me just close this down. Let me show you something that I did earlier. And I didn't go into too much detail at the time because it's a bit a bit complex. So I didn't want to kind of confuse the issue any more than needed to be. So these three parts here, I've actually done the same thing. I've done automation on this. So if I open it up now, and you can see this nice little frequency envelope is happening, just like we just did. Let me make this smaller so you can see it in real time. Turn that off. And that's how I got that really nice effect. Because it was, if you remember in the early lessons, it was sounding a bit, oh my god, that sounds a bit awful. And actually by putting those nice frequency filters on, it just it really worked. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Have some fun. Everything in logic can be automated, so you know, sky's the limit. But generally, volume, panning, and sort of EQ are the main three that, that kind of happen in dance music. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we're just going to finish off by exporting our track so we can actually listen to it on CD or an iPlayer.